And uh, I'm a manager, productionist, a coordinator, producer. So I do a bit of it all, but I think you have to do it in the industry. Um, I actually graduated from Howard University, and I had a degree in music and the arts, of course. So I thought maybe perhaps I'd get into the industry and find a way to uh, make money at what I'd like to do, and that was music. So uh, I, I began my process with having my own group, which was called Revelation. Oh, back in the early 70s, you know, a while back. But we um, had a few good records. We were signed to RSO Records at the Handshake Records. And from there, um, it just, I began the process. I started dealing with record labels and production companies and or publishing companies and entered into the industry. Before you know it, you're, you're in that full-fledged. So that's kind of how that began. After my stick with the uh, record labels, I saw that what was missing from the industries, I thought, was real good managers that understood what it meant to be an artist and understood the business or the, the record company side of the industry. And perhaps if I were able to manage that properly, it could probably help both sides of the industry, the artist and the um, executives. And I felt that that was the best way to do it. So I, I got into management, exactly. Producers needed management as well. So I began managing producers uh, and artists. So I had them both in my hands. And I thought that scheduling was always a problem with producers and all the artists. Someone was going to be late. So I got into I ha I had already had the experience of music, and my education had been in music. So consequently, I started going right in and doing the productions and ended up getting things scheduled, scheduling the musicians because I knew all the guys, I knew all the studios, their owners and or engineers. And I think it was just a natural event of things that happened, getting into uh, uh, production. And production is basically deciding who's going to be on the record, who's going to sing today, what engineer is going to be there, what instruments are going to be used, and coordinating it. And I found myself doing that. So now to the events of things, first I think I just started producing records, then I was doing a whole album, and so it just led one thing led to the other with production. I listen to everything that's sent to me, yes, I, I have to. You don't want to miss the next whoever. So um, if you're in the industry, my diligence is to make sure that I don't miss a great star or there's not an opportunity to help take someone into stardom. So it's, it's very important that we do lock into every piece of material. Every piece is important because someone has given time, some money, and they're putting their, their, they're vulnerable. They put their whole thing out to you. So they really want an opinion back. So I think it's important to give an opinion. I think it all works the same way. I think if you're a, a, a good manager and needs the same qualifications to be a good producer in different facets of the industry. But the same, you get, first we have to have some kind of integrity to be a good manager and or a good producer. I think those things are, 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 are conducive to each other. Either you're, you're, you're a good person and you want to do good by your artist and or the industry itself. And I always look for finding ways to have a longevity in the industry. And I found that if you knew a little bit about everything and what you didn't know, if you were able to hire the people that did know and put them in the right positions, I think you managed it well. In managing careers, I think, first of all, you need to find, find that great talent, that great artist, that once-in-a-lifetime kind of artistry, and find a way to market it so that record labels and or production companies or distributors want to have a part of that. And in doing that, you have to make it marketable and palatable for the industry and to sell records. And there are a lot of things that go in hand with that. But more importantly, I think it is about marketing and promotioning, promotions and making uh, your artist or your product a household name. So I think that begins having, making good management, understanding what the marketplace needs, what they're looking for, and how you can then exploit that so that it becomes successful on both ends. In management, I think it's, it's important that you be kind of like a director for a, um, a film or an executive uh, um, producer for an album. You need to actually help steer it through the system. 
A record label is a system that works based on you giving them information. They don't necessarily need to know. All they want to do is sell the record. They don't really want to know what the marketing plan is. They'll sit down with you and help formulate that. But a manager needs to do that man the events of the day. Get through the day. Get through the system. Make sure that all parts of the system is oiled, oiled and working on behalf of your artist. So I think that's what I concentrate on is making sure everybody's aware of my artist had a new record. We got a street date. And everybody's, everybody's on target with what needs to happen to make that come through. Live events is a very interesting portion of this business. Um, I think it coincides with actually producing the record, because what you want is to be able to give the audience the same kind of sound that you can, they can get or hear on the record. So um, I began to find out that there was a whole other world out there when it came to touring. And early on, uh, my group had toured with the Bee Gees, so I got a feel for what that was like. And I liked it, and I worked with Elton John, and I liked it. Um, I thought that that was a real possibility, so I began to find out what instrumentations you needed for a band or for band members, where you need to get it from, what kind of microphones, and I began to get into the particulars of what live events were really about, the venues, the promoters, getting paid, which is very, very interesting. But again, um, things just work, work hand in hand, I think. I think you begin doing one thing and you end up and you see there's a lack, and if you're a good manager, a good producer, you take up the lack and you do what you have to do to make your record or your event a successful a day. Not really. I mean, you, you know, I think there's a, there's a, either a song or there's music and, you know, that has to be transmitted to the audience. They, they got to feel what that is. And you want your live performance to be much like your records. You, you want to do that. You want to, you want people to know what they're going to get on stage is real and that you're really into it. I think live, again, has to do with being tempered, and that, that has to do with uh, the, exp the experience, what you have in terms, what you bring to the stage, how you use a mic, the technique in using a mic, um, the technique in being in the light, you know, not wandering off and being in darkness on stage, but being in the light. They're just things that come with knowing it. You get on stage, and you should do what you do in the studio, but it should be enhanced with experience. So I think bringing, that's why artists go on tour. That's why they're, they're, they're always put into rehearsal situations so that they can become adapted at what they do on stage. In these verses, Major. I think a record company's job is to sell the record. You know, it's our job to make the record. And they are they're there to sell the record and promote the record, do everything that they can to do that. So I don't necessarily know if there's any difference between uh, indie because uh, indie's got to be distributed by a major, basically, unless they're going to have all their own distribution set up. But again, if they're they they handle it the same way, you might be able to get something done a lot quicker at an indie because it's not large corporation; it's independent. So there's one guy you can go to and get what you need done that day. Where it may take majors a little long to get things done. That might be. What I see the difference is. There are, there are a number of things that I think I might advise. I advise my artists all the time. Number one, you have to be diligent. Um, in, the, in the compound word show business, there are two words, the show and business. And they both need to be up to par. The show can't be lacking and the business have to be on top of your game. So at the end of the day, you have to have both of those things working to enter into show business or entertainment. Because it's important. If, you, if you're lacking on one side, it shows up on the stage where it counts the most. Or it shows up in the records. So both have to work hand in hand. And number one, you, you know, there's so many artists that, that want to be artists that are not really artists. You know, they aspire to be artists, but you got, you got to really have some talent. Right? You know, that's first of all. You just can't. Be learning to play guitar and, and want to be the biggest guitar in the world, guitarist in the world. But you have to be a real artist, first of all, and not fooling yourself or your family telling you that you're good. You know, you really got to be good in this industry. That's the bottom line. The talent is unbelievable. So 
You have to be good at what you do. And then you have to always work at your at your craft. I have artists that are keyboard players and or because they're producers or they're musicians, and they still practice seven to eight hours a day. They're still making their business. They're working at their craft. And I think it's important that, we, that all artists do that. So my advice is to really be an artist, first of all. Really have your business together. Really understand what it means. You gotta go ahead and do everything. If you're a, if you're a singer or performer, you have to perform the whole time. You gotta get on stage. You gotta be able to sing, dance, play an instrument. You gotta do the whole spectrum of an artist, cause that's what it takes these days. No, you hang out in a classroom or in a laboratory that actually teaches you how to produce. And being a producer means you must be able to at least play a number of different types of instruments, or either or either understand the mechanisms of what that is to produce a track. And when we say track, we mean a recording uh, in a studio. So you either have to know how to play the instrument or know what that brings to the table or brings to the production sound of each record or each artist. Producer actually does that. So you, you gotta know instrumentations. Orchestration is kinda key. You know, it's kinda key to know how to orchestrate a whole song from the bass track straight through to the strings. You have to understand what that means. The, the best advice that I can give someone is to really have your heart, your mind, and your soul in your work. You know, um, you can kind of be a jack of all trades, but sometime in your lifetime you have to find and decide, this is who I am, this is what I do, and you go and you do that. You, uh, in this industry, there's a sense of knowing that must come along with who you are. And you got to work at your craft to become who you are.